What type of uh, music did you listen to when you were growing up? Are we were happening? We're happening. Okay. Well, um, I was raised in um, Malta. So I would listen to the American Forces Network and hear Nat King Cole, Lena Horne, Billy Holiday, that kind of thing, up until I was um, a teenager. And then I was in England and um, I had a correspondence with Stax, Volt and Atlantic. And they would send me all the singles. So at that time I was listening to um, Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, Wilson Pickett, James Brown, Still do. What, uh, in, in your growing up years, if you had to name an artist for a record that had the most influence on you, who do you think it would be and which record? I'm sure that the most influential record on me as a singer during that, the formative period when I first joined groups was Otis Redding Sings Soul Ballads. It was the first record I bought. I still listen to it. It's marvelous. Okay. Um, will it be a problem for you to not smoke? No, it won't be a problem for me to not smoke. Okay, we can take a break at any point. Okay. That you want to. And uh, smoke. I'm a smoker too, so I know what you mean. Um, how did uh, how did you how did you figure out how to write Stax, Walt, and Atlantic and ask them for singles? I mean, well, because in the local record store, there were certain things that you could get. Or at the time there would be um, Caroli Caroline, Radio Caroline, which was a pirate ship off England that would play imported records. So you'd get a clue that there was something out there, but it wasn't re readily available. So I would have to, um, I just wrote off on the label and uh, started up a correspondence. And then the, the thing was that uh, the group I was in would learn the song before it was released and you know essentially because nobody else knew the material it was like your, you were your own song they didn't hear it anywhere else it was very exciting to be in that time where you had a line on a kind of music that was so exciting both to perform and to be in the environment of when it was happening and the audience didn't know where it was coming from at the time this is uh, 20 years ago Otis Redding that made him so special as a performer? Wow. Um, Otis Redding just uh, had this immediate sense of um, realism. It was such a physical singer and so honest in the way he sang physically and the tone of his voice and, the, I mean, everything around him was great too, the arrangements and everything, but it just, I mean, cut through like, uh, you know, one of those voices that comes through every generation that just got something absolutely timeless and it appeals to everybody everywhere. It's just a, you know, a gift, I guess. I was, I was fortunate enough uh, a couple of months ago to, to spend some time and interview Steve Cropper. Oh yeah, yeah. And we were talking, we were talking about Otis, and he said the first time Otis ever came into the studio and sang, everybody just stopped mm -hmm. because they knew. You know, uh, um, I would put amongst people, um, singers that have that thing currently, um, Mavis Staples, incredible singer. Um, the early stuff they did, they had a, a boom with songs like "Respect Yourself" and "I'll Take You There" and. Her singing's amazing. I think she's put out a solo album recently. And um, Pop Staples is playing a part in the new David Byrne film that's coming up. So it's still, you know, still going along in different disguises. Robert, if you had to define the term soul music, how would you define it? It's just honest. You know, uh, soul music is, is all about Honesty. It's usually very physical music, but it's not acting music like Broadway. It, there's, n there's no melodrama in it, like Lisa Minnelli, where it, you're playing a part. It's completely honest, you know. It's, uh, it's almost like a behavior. It sort of takes you over. I mean, a lot of the, uh, a 
I think most of the roots of soul music are in the church, where it's like um, adul adulatory music. <laughs> Well, music changes um, these days because the media puts so much out there that it becomes more and more homogenized. And I always see music, or anything for that matter, that's done in the past as a building block for the future to build on. So the, the, it all gets crossed up and changed. It, uh, all music kind of loses its folk tradition, once it gets uh, more broadly popular. But um, as a rule, it's like, I mean, Sly Stone was a huge instigator of music, and his wave can still be felt. But then I suppose Sly Stone was very James Brown influenced. Uh, during the show, you must ask James Brown who his influences were. Sure. That'll be real interesting. Mm. I'm, I'm anxious to know that. Yeah, I am. I'm sure the audience is. <laughs> How do you think, of, or what effect do you think the soul has had on rock and roll? <clears throat> well, let's see, soul music on rock and roll. I mean, without making too sweeping a statement, I think that most contemporary American music is all based in blues and soul, that kind of tradition. 80% of it is. There's very little, I mean, like things like The Birds were, at the time when I was listening to uh, Otis Redding, the only alternative that I had of listening, that comes from a different tradition, from a, a country tradition, you know. But I think most rock, I mean, look, Tina Turner these days has crossed a whole barrier with what she does. But uh, would you define that anymore as soul music, you know? it's. Um, Bobby Womack's probably one of the, isn't his latest album called Soul Survivor? You know, it is, it is sort of like a, a folk art that's become homogenized, not really that spoilt it, it just changes all the time and makes a new building block for something else. You know. At uh, certain points, you know, people have been defined, certain artists have been defined as blue-eyed soul singers. Yeah. to uh, uh, Hall and Oates, to Paul Young, and even to you. Do you think there is blue-eyed soul? Do you think it's possible? I don't think soul has a color, you know. I mean, uh, if uh, white music's tradition is supposed to be based in opera or whatever, it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, the tradition of music is built up from the environment that you're in and the sounds that you hear. You don't, it doesn't just come out of thin air. I mean, there are aspects of it do, you know, like the inspiration, but the actual sounds and everything, I don't think it's, it's, um, it has any color at all. But um, the folk tradition certainly did, like we were saying earlier, it's uh, definitely rooted in blues and gospel. And then you get add the rhythm and you have rhythm and blues. What are your five favorite soul records? My five favorite soul records. Uh, obviously, the one I was talking about earlier, um, Otis Redding sings soul, soul Ballads. Then there's a riot going on, Sly Stone, if that's a soul record. Um, let's see. It's tricky because it's a narrow subject. Um, you should have asked me this in advance, so I could, uh, you know, have written it down. But let's see, I'm sure I can think of some more. Uh, James Brown's album, The Payback, I particularly like. Um, two more. Gosh, well, I would say Chief Commander Ebenezer and his International Brothers, which is Nigerian music, but it's still soul music. And the fifth one, this is really weird. I'd have to be by a woman called Parween Sultana, who sings Persian love songs and is just as much a soul singer as I am. That's interesting. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, James Brown. Mm -hmm. Do you 
James Brown. When, when, when is the first time you heard James Brown? Papa's got a brand new bag is my first introduction to James Brown. And then over the years, I started collecting his records. And now I've got them all autographed, too. When was the first time you met him? Um, I met James Brown in an airport in Brussels and asked him for his autograph. There's only one other guy I asked for his autograph. He's an author. Um, I've always caught his shows whenever I can. There's nothing like it, you know. In fact, I suppose there's only really him and Miles Davis, so I really, really honestly enjoy life. Um, what, are, what are some of your other favorite soul performers? Well, when I was living in England, the Stax Volt Review came to England, and I took off work and followed it round and saw... Sam and Dave and Otis Redding and Booker T and the MGs, that was a real experience for me because I'd been a fan for so long and to actually see it, it was just marvellous, you know, so moving. Are there any um, current new up-and-coming soul artists that you're aware of? Um, yeah. Um, seeing as we were talking about how soul music now has a lot of different flavors, let's call it. I really enjoy um, Family's new album, the band that's associated with Prince. And the singer for Go West, I think, is a great soul singer. He reminds me very much of um, Howard Hewitt, the singer from Shalimar, who I, I guess would be more called maybe dance music, but it, it's fine lines to make the distinctions. Um, but as far as the actual soul tradition as a folk music, um, I think perhaps it's, it doesn't really exist much, apart from the, uh, the guy I mentioned earlier, um, Soul Survivor. Bobby Womack, Bobby, Bobby Womack, yeah. Over a long period of time, mm -hmm. You mean, apart from, you know, like, present thing. Um, African music, in general, I've been a collector of since I was 20. Um, I worked with two African percussionists, and they taught me a lot of the basics at that time, and got me records from Nigeria and stuff. So, and since then, I've followed that a lot. I listen a lot to Middle Eastern music, singers. The uh, melodies drive me crazy. I find it the most romantic style. I also enjoy listening to Billie Holiday still a lot and Astrid Gilberto, Carlos Jobim, that kind of music. That's my sort of staple diet. But I'm also a huge enthusiast for whatever's contemporary in that um, I get sent a lot of music or I go and buy a lot of it. But um, it's I'll, I just love to listen. There's always new links and you hear new things come through and somebody taking a piece from there and a piece from there and adding it all up and coming up with something completely fresh. It's always exciting, you know. Um, I'm looking to produce a band called Comsat Angels in uh, a month or so. Uh, I'm writing a couple of songs to finish off my next record project, which will be dependent on when I do that It'd be whether or not I go on the road. I'm hoping to go out on the road uh, beginning of March through the US. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm trying to juggle all these elements and get the timing right on them. Well, thank you for taking time and coming and talking to us. My pleasure. Okay. Cheers.